Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome at uh, the press conference following the Foreign Affairs Council of today. High Representative Triga Mogherini will uh, update you on the outcomes of the Council, and then we'll take a couple of questions. High Representative, you have the floor. Thank you, Maya. Uh, I would like to start uh, uh, with uh, uh, the obvious fact that uh, we've been following in the last hour the news coming from St. Petersburg. Uh, together with uh, foreign ministers of uh, all the EU member states. Uh, obviously, uh, our condolences uh, go to um, all Russian people, and uh, in particular those who lost uh, uh, their uh, loved ones. And uh, um, we continue to follow the news coming from uh, uh, St. Petersburg, Petersburg with a lot of uh, apprehension. Um, as we will uh, receive more details, obviously, uh, we will be more uh, precise also in our reaction, but uh, I expressed uh, uh, my condolences also to the Foreign Minister uh, Lavrov in a message we sent him um, uh, earlier. Um, in the Council today, we adopted important uh, decisions, first of all on Syria, uh, as we will host uh, the Syria conference tomorrow in Brussels, tomorrow and the day after tomorrow in Brussels. Uh, we have uh, adopted uh, a European Union common strategy on Syria. Uh, you will define it, uh, uh, you will find it uh, well defined on paper, black and white, uh, focusing on six uh, major objectives that the European Union will, uh, um, will uh, um, put at the center of its work. Um, we find it is essential uh, for the international community to keep focused on the situation in Syria. We have, uh, um, as we enter in the seventh year of the conflict, 13.5 uh, million Syrians in need of humanitarian assistance uh, inside Syria, including 6.3 million Syrians internally displaced and uh, an additional 5 million Syrian refugees hosted in the wider region. Uh, this requires uh, uh, not only humanitarian uh, support, uh, which is something that we, we hope uh, the international community uh, will commit to uh, the day after tomorrow in Brussels. On our side, we will uh, uh, continue to be the major humanitarian donor for Syrians. But also, uh, this situation requires the international community to unite to facilitate a political solution to the conflict. Um, for the European Union, it is essential, first of all, to uh, find a framework uh, uh, to ensure a genuine political transition, uh, supporting the work of the uh, UN Special Envoy, Staffan de Mistura. The conference uh, the day after tomorrow will focus also on supporting uh, uh, the Geneva talks and his work. I talked to Staffan this morning and uh, we uh, shared some considerations on how to um, proceed. Uh, on the political transition and the solution to the conflict. Second, um, promoting a meaningful and inclusive transition uh, in Syria. Uh, this means also uh, creating space for uh, all the Syrian people, including all different backgrounds, including civil society, including women, and obviously the Syrian opposition in whatever kind of uh, uh, solution and agreement uh, can be found. Third, uh, saving lives by addressing the humanitarian needs uh, of the most vulnerable Syrians across the country. Uh, this, uh, as I said, is the field where the European Union has been more consistent and will continue uh, for sure to be, but we do not want to be the only ones, not only pledging but also delivering on the pledges. This is why in the conference uh, we will uh, assess where we are on the uh, commitments uh, we all made in London last year and see where we need to fill the gaps. Uh, fourth, uh, promoting democracy, human rights and freedom of speech by strengthening Syria, uh, Syrian civil society organizations. As you might know, the European Union has been working constantly with uh, uh, Syrians uh, of all backgrounds uh, in uh, the last years and we will continue to do so. Um, Fifth point uh, that is very important to us and to all member states uh, that was restressed today, uh, the need to promote accountability for war crimes uh, with a view to facilitating a national reconciliation process and transitional justice. Uh, this is uh, uh, something uh, on which we believe uh, uh, can be based uh, the future of Syria. And uh, last but not least, supporting the resilience of the Syrian population and the Syrian society. Uh, this uh, uh, includes uh, some uh, preparation work uh, that we will start 
together with the UN system and with the international financial institutions on uh, the bigger picture of how the international community gets ready to support the reconstruction, the reconciliation and the stabilization of the country in the moment when um, a political agreement uh, is found um, to pave the way to the transition. Um, this uh, uh, will be also a conference, and we discussed this with the ministers, uh, to support the region at large, uh, in particular uh, Turkey, uh, Jordan and Lebanon. Uh, we will uh, uh, work with them uh, on uh, the follow-up of London. In particular, we have the uh, EU-Turkey uh, statement, but uh, also, um, and mainly I would say, the compacts we have developed with Jordan and Lebanon. Uh, we will uh, assess together with uh, uh, the Prime Ministers of Jordan and Lebanon uh, our support to these two countries that are key and the way forward uh, to this, um, but also our support to uh, Egypt and Iraq, are the two countries that are highly affected by the Syrian crisis, and uh, um, this will be an opportunity for the entire international community to uh, give a strong support to the entire uh, region. But again, let me stress humanitarian sustained support, full uh, engagement in supporting the UN work in Geneva, political talks, third, starting to prepare for uh, the reconstruction. That will have to be ready, but will come only when a political transition and a political agreement will be um, in place. Uh, we also adopted uh, important uh, decisions and conclusions on Yemen that you uh, will be able to see. Um, I think they are published by now, um, where the European Union, uh, first of all, uh, points to the fact that uh, um, this cannot become a forgotten crisis. Uh, it is uh, uh, entering its third year. Uh, it's uh, uh, politically entering into a stalemate. Uh, that we cannot uh, afford uh, it takes place. First of all, because we have 17 million citizens there that are aid dependent, out of which uh, more than 7 million are uh, on the brink of famine. Uh, this can have very serious humanitarian consequences, but also security consequences that are very serious for the entire region, being the entire region spreading to the Red Sea and the Horn of Africa. Uh, so this affects uh, a broader um, stability and security um, implication that uh, uh, we are um, trying to tackle. Um, the European Union is also in this crisis a major humanitarian uh, donor, but we are also facilitating uh, some talks uh, and some um, efforts to resume um, negotiations. Um, we have decided to increase our uh, not only humanitarian but also political and diplomatic work to try and uh, bring an end to this uh, conflict. Uh, we also exchanged views on uh, Libya. I updated the ministers on uh, the latest developments and uh, in particular on the establishment of the uh, quartet on Libya where the European Union joined the Arab League, uh, the African Union and the UN in trying to um, bring the Libyans together, east and west, within the Libyan uh, political agreement. Uh, it is a pure illusion uh, and a dangerous illusion uh, to think that one part can uh, rule over the entire country against the other. What is needed is really uh, for all Libyans to come together, and we believe that working together with other regional organizations, in particular with the Arab League and the African Union, and obviously the United Nations, this can help the Libyans uh, to come together themselves. Um, we also um, uh, went through uh, the latest uh, developments uh, when it comes to uh, security in Libya, when it comes to the situation in the oil crescent, uh, stressing the need uh, uh, to preserve the oil infrastructure for all Libyans and preventing illegal uh, oil sales outside the official channels and circuits, the, um, uh, the NOC and the central bank, uh, and uh, uh, also the, uh, on one aspect uh, that is not the central and the only aspect uh, with which uh, we deal with when we discuss about Libya, meaning the migration one. We um, went through the implementation of the Malta um, decisions and in particular uh, commented uh, on uh, uh, the agreement uh, uh, that also 
the um, southern tribes uh, of Libya uh, signed uh, recently, uh, I think at the end of last week, to agree among themselves about uh, uh, better management of the southern borders among themselves to fight traffickers. I think that we shared the approach that these developments uh, need our encouragement and support, and this is something we will uh, guarantee, uh, as well as we are um, glad to see that the IOM is uh, uh, restarting its work uh, in the country, and uh, we are uh, fully supporting them in this uh, effort. Um, we um, finished our agenda today with a, a long and very productive um, exchange with the Secretary General of the League of Arab States, uh, Hamed Abulgate. Um, I met him just last week uh, in uh, Jordan, where he kindly invited me to address uh, the opening of the uh, summit of the Arab League. Um, we have been working very closely together in the last months, um, the meeting in Cairo of the Quartet on Libya, uh, together the uh, foreign ministers meeting of the Arab League and the European Union at the end of December. Uh, we uh, have a commonality of uh, um, approaches and policies when it comes to the Middle East peace process, when it comes to several of the uh, regional crises. We also discussed the preparation of the Brussels conference. Um, and uh, uh, we have decided to continue uh, to work together very closely, coordinating uh, as much as possible our positions and uh, steps, including uh, starting to work on uh, holding the first uh, summit uh, between the European Union and the League of Arab States. Uh, that was uh, uh, first decided uh, in our ministerial meeting in Cairo in December and then confirmed at the summit uh, in Jordan last week. So we will start preparations for that in the coming weeks. I'll stop here and uh, um, I'm ready for uh, your questions. Thank you very much. We have time for a couple of questions. Um, uh, as usual, please introduce yourself and the media you're working for. Thank you very much, Ali. 